one of the important things, a lot of people think butterflies are just pretty, but they do important work, and that's really why this project, project is something that we're really feeling good about. They're called pollinators. And Tom, just give a brief summary of what a pollinator is, would you? Well, pollinators can come in many forms. Even the wind is a pollinator. It blows around uh, pollen from one flower to another. But butterflies will land on a flower to get this nectar for food, and they'll touch the pollen in the flower. And the next flower they land on, some of that pollen will come off. And so they'll land on it, get some nectar. Northern Michigan teens are on a mission to protect pollinators by helping butterflies and restoring native plants to areas of the Upper Peninsula. Perhaps the best known pollinators are bees, like honeybees and bumblebees. Bumblebees are, are, are pollinators on steroids. They're ten times more effective in pollinating than a honeybee. They produce a particular type or engage in a particular type of pollination that's called buzz pollination. And if you've been around blueberries that are flowering, or really a lot of other garden plants or tomatoes, you'll hear this drilling buzzing sound. It reminds me of a dentist drill. It's a loud buzzing sound and they're, they're, they violently buzz the inside of that plant and there are some plant species that have to be pollinated that roughly to, to be um, effectively pollinated. Billions of these bees are dying across the world in a syndrome called colony collapse disorder. Bees are going away. Uh, both the non-native honeybees that are, are extremely valuable, again, for all the things that they pollinate and the honey, and the native bees as well. And we're seeing, for instance, especially a reduction in the number of bumblebees. But there are some that we're not seeing anymore. They had a huge range in the United States and they're not there. We do know that there are about two species that are now extinct. So we are concerned about bumblebees. Life on Earth would, I mean, it's trite to say this, but would look very different than it is now. We need them probably significantly more than they need us. Well, it could be the habitat loss. Um, in a lot of the urban areas where we have opportunities to provide the pollen and nectar sources plants, the plants aren't there any longer. Um, grass is wind pollinated, is of no use to pollinators, and some of the plants that people landscape with don't have any nectar or pollen in them. Some of the cultivars and hybrids, so that's kind of a dirty trick. Bees are disappearing, and it's not clear why, although human impact on the environment are among the suspected causes, like pesticides and global warming. Because all the flowers are dying, you don't have any idea what's going on, do you? What did you want to show me? This. A world without bees would mean a world without food, as was dramatically pointed out in the Jerry Seinfeld 2007 comedy, Bee Movie. In the cartoon movie, bees go on strike, causing plants across the world to die. That means no food, no flowers, no trees, the death of civilization itself. I guess I didn't think that bees not needing to make honey would affect all these other things. It's not just flowers, fruits, vegetables, they all need bees. So you take away the produce, that affects the entire animal kingdom, and then, of course... Human species. So if there's no more pollination, it could all just go south here, couldn't it? After bees, the next best pollinators are butterflies. Goes on here, and notice there's a little, it's cut on an angle. It's got to go on so that it, so that it, notice this is at an angle, at, at an angle as well. So this has got to fit down in here. Marquette, Michigan area teens and Native American youth spent the summer of 2008 building butterfly houses that are longer and slimmer than bird houses and are lined with bark. This looks pretty good. Okay, I'll, I'll grab the bark. Teens participating in the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Summer Youth Program built and painted the houses at the tribe's Natural Resource Department along Lake Superior. 
KBIC Natural Resource Department Director Todd Warner said the Zodki Project is a good way for youth to become aware of their connection to natural resources and nature. The butterfly houses offer protection to butterflies that can enter through tiny slits. Well, we put the bark in the inside, like so. For the butterflies to rest on. They go through here by folding their wings and back, backwards, and they just walk right through. Put it on the top so that the sunlight doesn't get in so they can have a good night's rest. And I'm here with the Kiwana Bay Indian Community Summer Youth Program. Um, we have about six children here today um, working on making um, butterfly houses that will be presented to um, the KBIC tribe to be put into down in the powwow grounds. Tell me why this is important work what they're doing. Um, it teaches the kids um, how to do other things to be um, working as a part of a team. It's, it's something fun for them to do to learn things um, that have to deal with the uh, uh, natural resources um, part of our community. Butterfly houses also offer rest to migrating monarchs and can be used for reproduction. We're planting the Monarda seeds and the columba. 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 columba seeds. The Zodki Project teens planted or distributed some 26,000 native species plant seeds. Some of those seeds were planted at the Hiawatha National Forest Greenhouse in Marquette. I mean, these plants will be out there growing and reproducing for years and years to come. After getting bigger over the winter, in the spring of 2009, the plants will be replanted at several areas across northern Michigan, including at Sand Point, a beach that the Keweenaw Bay Indian community has been repairing from the effects of copper mining. About a century ago, the mine dumped copper processing waste into Lake Superior, polluting miles of shoreline. The KBIC tribe capped the pollution and the native plants will be used to attract wildlife and restore the ecosystem. Well, we'd like to see the native plants reestablished down there to keep the diversity going and also this, these are plants that um, the wildlife is using for here and without them then we'll be losing the wildlife. Not only the plants will be affected but they'll be affected and will be affected too. The tribe has uh, always taken a stance that they they want to see they want a propagation of the native species they want to protect the native species to keep this or keep this area the way it is now well monarch butterflies will lay their eggs on the, the milkweed plant the eggs will mature into caterpillars and then the caterpillars eat the leaves off of the milkweed plant and that's how they get their how they grow into butterflies they form their chrysalis and then they um, they pollinate the um, milkweed plants once they're their butterflies. So, the Zodki Wings and Seeds Project enters its second year in the summer of 2009. This is the first of several videos on the many aspects of the Zodki Project that was founded by the nonprofit Cedar Tree Institute in Marquette and its executive director, the Reverend John Magnuson. The Cedar Tree Institute has sponsored numerous environment projects like the Earth Keeper Initiative and the Earth Healing Initiative. The three-year Zodki Project is sponsored by Marquette County Juvenile Court, the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community, and the United States Forest Service. Other Zodki Project videos will include a look at a bee farm in Marquette County that fascinated Zodki Project teens who received a close look at the hives and learned about the importance of pollinators. This is a drone and it looks very different from the workers and the neat thing about drones is they don't sting. Also the Cedar Tree Institute held a barbecue to honor Zodki teens. Let's give them a hand as they come up. The Zodki Project teenagers were also honored during a Keweenaw Bay Indian community powwow. Then we also have an honor song for the Zodki Project, the Native Plant Protection Project. 
laid out by travel unions and young people to Marquette. Jan Schultz of the U.S. Forest Service was interviewed by a California radio station. We're seeing decreases in numbers and species in areas throughout uh, the world, actually. You know, the sm smoking guns that seem to weigh heavy in this, reduction of habitat, decrease in the native species of plants that the native pollinators need. And, of course, about 80% of the stuff that we look at on our table is pollinated by insects. Another issue, of course, is the non-judicious use of pesticides, and that's, that's looming very large now. All this in future videos. The Zodki Project is made possible by contributors like the Marquette Community Foundation, the Nagani Community Fund, the Nagani Community Youth Fund, the M.E. Davenport Foundation, the Kaufman Foundation, the Phyllis and Max Reynolds Foundation, with assistance from the Upper Peninsula Children's Museum in Marquette, Michigan, and the Borealis Seed Company in Big Bay, Michigan. I'm Greg Peterson, and you're watching Zodki TV.